The objective of the braking system is to stop a vehicle in an efficient, stable and progressive manner. The following factors influence braking efficiency. The driver. The road surface grip conditions. The tyre wear condition. And the active forces, which are the surface contact force the longitudinal force and the transversal force. Grip allows the transmission of the forces between the tyre and the road surface. Slip, in contrast to grip, does not allow the transmission of the forces. An increase in the amount of slip leads to a reduction in grip. Slip and grip are totally linked. Now let's take a look at the different conditions of grip. Click on the brake pedal. On dry concrete, the grip coefficient is at its maximum and the slip is almost zero. On a wet road surface there is less grip and the slip value increases. On fresh snow, the grip coefficient drops and the slip value is very high. On ice, the grip coefficient is almost zero, and the slip value is at its maximum level. During emergency braking, high pressure is applied to the brake pedal. The wheels lock. Click on the brake pedal to view this phenomenon. Locking of the wheels causes a loss of vehicle stability and control. If the slip value is at 100%, the wheels lock and the vehicle loses grip. The role of the ABS system is to prevent the wheels from locking during emergency braking. A slip value not exceeding 20% enables the control of the vehicle to be retained. The ABS system comprises the following elements. Wheel speed sensors, targets, and an ABS unit. This ABS unit comprises a computer, a hydraulic unit, and a motor driving a hydraulic pump. Mouse over the component. The wheel speed sensors measure the speed of rotation of the wheels. The rotating targets generate signals that are read by the sensors. The sensors send these signals to the ABS computer. A rapid drop in speed indicates the start of a wheel locking. There are two types of wheel speed sensor. Passive sensors and active sensors. The passive sensor, also known as the inductive sensor, comprises a permanent magnet and a coil. The sensor is fitted opposite a target. The target is a toothed wheel, which may be known as a pulse wheel. The rotating toothed wheel generates a variation in the magnetic field and induces a sinusoidal signal. The signal quality depends on the speed of rotation of the wheels. The active sensor is supplied by the computer. It measures the speed of rotation from 0 km per hour. The sensor is fixed opposite the target. The target is sometimes built into the wheel bearing. The magnetic target takes the form of a succession of north and south poles. The alternation of the poles varies the signal output. The signal output takes the form of a square pulse signal of variable frequency. When replacing a wheel bearing, comply with the recommendations in the technical documentation. The ABS unit comprises the following elements. A computer, a hydraulic unit, and a motor driving a hydraulic pump. The computer receives information from each wheel sensor. As soon as one wheel shows a tendency to lock, the computer sends a command to the solenoids and the hydraulic pump. The computer receives information from the brake pedal. 
the computer informs the driver of a problem via a warning light on the instrument panel. The hydraulic unit comprises the following elements. A hydraulic pump, which prevents the pedal from being fully depressed during the ABS regulation phase. Pressure accumulators. And solenoids that regulate the braking pressure for each wheel. Each wheel has an inlet solenoid and an outlet solenoid. The presence of ABS regulation on the rear wheels eliminates the need for a brake compensator. The electronic brake distributor is an additional function managed by the computer. The electronic brake distributor modulates the pressure to the rear wheels. If the ABS system is no longer electrically supplied, the electronic brake distributor becomes inoperative. There is then a major risk of the rear wheels side-slipping when braking. Here are some exercises to do before we continue. Which slip values allow control of the vehicle to be retained? Which type of signal is sent by an active wheel sensor? In this section we covered the following points. The factors that influence braking efficiency are the driver, the road surface grip conditions, the tyre wear condition and the active forces. An increase in the amount of slip leads to a reduction in grip. Locking of the wheels causes a loss of vehicle stability and control. The role of the ABS system is to prevent the wheels from locking during emergency braking. The ABS system comprises wheel speed sensors, magnetic targets and an ABS unit. The wheel speed sensors measure the speed of rotation of the wheels. There are two types of wheel speed sensor, passive sensors and active sensors. As soon as one wheel shows a tendency to lock, the computer sends a command to the solenoids and the hydraulic pump. The electronic brake distributor is an additional function managed by the computer. Under conditions of good grip and during normal braking, the brake system operates without the intervention of the ABS system. However, during emergency braking, one or several wheels may lock. Click on the brake pedal to view this phenomenon. The computer monitors the acceleration and deceleration speeds of the wheel via the sensors. If braking regulation becomes necessary, the computer sends a command to the solenoids and activates the pump. The front wheel solenoids are controlled separately. The solenoids for the rear are controlled simultaneously. Let's start with the principle that the rear axle must be braked using a force which is lower than the force used for the front axle. The rear wheel solenoids are controlled simultaneously. The computer uses the electronic brake distributor logic to do this. The computer takes account of the information from the rear wheel that is turning the slowest. This computer function is called select low. In addition to lighting the brake lights under braking, the stop switch sends a signal to the ABS computer. Click on the brake pedal to view this phenomenon. The information from the stop switch allows the ABS computer to determine the start of braking in order to anticipate braking regulation. In the same way, when the pedal is released, the stop switch information allows the computer to quit an ABS regulation phase more quickly. Now let's look at braking without regulation. Click on the brake pedal. In the case of braking without regulation, the ABS unit does not intervene. The braking pressure is created via the hydraulic unit. At rest, the inlet solenoids are open and the outlet solenoids are closed. The increase in pressure takes place inside the circuit and builds up uniformly. Now let's look at the maintained pressure phase. Click on the brake pedal. 
the pressure in the circuit increases. In this case, wheel slip has a tendency to exceed the 20% threshold. The computer controls the closure of the inlet solenoid and isolates the master cylinder from the brake caliper. An increase in the braking pressure for this wheel becomes impossible. Now let's look at the pressure reduction phase. If the wheel starts to lock, the computer reduces the pressure for the wheel concerned. The inlet solenoid remains closed, the outlet solenoid opens and the pump is activated. The drop in pressure is instantaneous, thanks to the low pressure accumulator. The pump action allows the fluid stored inside the accumulator to flow back to the master cylinder outlet circuit, thus preventing the pedal from being depressed. The backflow causes the pulses felt on the pedal. Now let's look at the pressure re-increase phase. The outlet solenoid closes and the inlet solenoid opens. The master cylinder is reconnected to the brake caliper. Once again, the pressure increases and the wheel returns to its slip point. The faster the regulation frequency, the finer the regulation in braking pressure. Current systems can produce between 30 and 50 pulses per second. When the ABS system ceases to be operational, all the solenoids are deactivated and are automatically reset to the rest position. The conventional braking cycle is still active. Thus, the circuit pressure is directly sent to the brake cylinders. However, the driver must be aware of the consequences of driving without ABS or with the ABS system inoperative. Here are some exercises to do before we continue. Which element cancels the ABS function when the driver lifts off the brake pedal? Which element controls the arrival of brake fluid at the calipers during ABS regulation? Which illustration represents the reduction of pressure during ABS regulation. In this section, we covered the following points. Under good conditions of grip, the brake system functions without the intervention of the ABS system. The computer takes account of the information from the rear wheel that is turning the slowest. The information from the stop switch allows the computer to quit an ABS regulation phase more quickly. At rest, the inlet solenoids are open and the outlet solenoids are closed. The computer controls the closure of the inlet solenoid and isolates the master cylinder from the brake caliper. During pressure reduction, the outlet solenoid opens and the pump is activated. During a re-increase in pressure, the outlet solenoid closes and the inlet solenoid opens. The conventional braking cycle is still active. Certain precautions must be taken when carrying out a repair on the ABS system. Check the condition and the cleanliness of the sensors, the instrumented bearings, and the targets. Check to make sure that none of the targets are damaged. Check the condition of the wiring and the cleanliness of the electrical connectors. Take care to follow the correct routing of the wiring and connectors. The reliability of the ABS system depends on this. When refitting the hydraulic unit, check to make sure that the brake pipes are correctly fixed and that there is no leakage of fluid. Also check to make sure that the wiring connection shows no traces of oxidation or of overheating. An operation on the ABS unit may require opening of the hydraulic circuit. It is necessary to bleed the brake circuit once the operation is completed. There are some special points to consider in the procedure for bleeding a brake system equipped with ABS. In addition to the usual bleed operation, there is the additional bleed operation for the hydraulic unit and its various circuits. 
The bleed operation for a conventional braking system without ABS consists of bleeding in the following order. The rear right hand wheel. The front left hand wheel. The rear left hand wheel. And the front right hand wheel. Certain models equipped with ABS require the bleed operation to be performed in a specific order to facilitate the hydraulic unit bleed operation. Please consult the technical documentation for details of the correct bleed procedure and the special tooling required. Now let's do an exercise before continuing. Which situation may occur if the electronic brake distributor is inoperative? In this section we covered the following points. When carrying out a repair on the ABS system, check the condition and the cleanliness of the sensors, the instrumented bearings and the targets. When the hydraulic unit is refitted, the brake pipes must be correctly fixed and there must be no leakage. There are some special points to consider in the procedure for bleeding a brake system equipped with ABS. Certain models equipped with ABS require the bleed operation to be performed in a specific order to facilitate the hydraulic unit bleed operation.